realized I didn't want to spend the rest of my life complaining. Um, I wanted to do something practical. So when women were calling and pouring out these heartbreaking stories about the marriages they were trapped in, I figured that's it, we can do something about this. And I put a sign on the bulletin board and 10 women came and we decided we were going to do it and we were going to be a feminist collective. And we were going to work collaboratively and make a difference. So we see a lot of, uh, I think, uh, responding to a lot of the different changes that are happening within women's shelters. The clientele is changing, the complexity is increasing, um, and shelters are really trying the best that they can to cobble together solutions, uh, sometimes with uh, s huge systemic barriers. And they're resilient in doing that, they're imaginative in doing that, they're creative in doing that, and but they're doing it. So we decided to uh, build both a shelter that was going to be eight times larger than the old shelter, which was very, very cramped. Um, that included wraparound services, that was a, a community services hub that uh, women and children in the community who were experiencing violence but are possibly unable to get into shelter because there's a 78% turnaway rate, as we saw in 2019, um, could still access the services that they needed to. So that was sort of the, the overall uh, vision. We also knew that 60% of our residents are children so we needed to make the shelter um, child-centered, uh, uh, needed to make sure that it was accessible, that it responded to the needs of uh, women of color and uh, indigenous women and all the diverse communities of women that access the shelters in Toronto. Some people even think that they're uh, mats on the floor. And uh, shelters do so much more than that, uh, you know, in providing supports to women, uh, to their children, uh, sometimes to even perpetrators, uh, to doing education in the community, doing outreach services, participating in collaborative responses, you know, uh, trying to change courts and advocacy, like their plate is full and they do an amazing amount of work. The blueprint didn't come from us, it came from survivors and it came from um, workers, the frontline workers. And so we knew that we basically had a list, uh, a to-do list that was given to us and um, that's kind of what we're, you know, building. We could never have pictured how much the world would change in terms of acknowledging the violence against women and changing laws, changing the way that police work, um, trying to change courts, although that's not been all that successful as far as I can tell, um, but also convincing Canadians that this is happening, that it's wrong, and that everyone should be contributing somehow to making it stop. Still, uh, in spite of the long history, a real lack of knowledge about violence against women amongst the different uh, systems that are responding to domestic violence. So the social safety network is bigger and stronger, but the violence continues, and, and the ways in which that violence is delivered are shifting and changing. I think I thought that if, if the world knew about it, um, that it would change faster. We have to be very cognizant that the, um, the movement to support women and to support feminist work hasn't quite shifted, you know, it, societally um, to a place where it's supported and so we are also doing work and sometimes what feels like increasingly hostile waters I think just staying uh, political staying you know uh, b being that loud voice for women and remembering that advocacy is an absolute core part of our work um, is really really crucial <laughs>